are gonna review the AMA that Alexis from Tajim Games, he's the head developer of Crossout, he did an AMA on Reddit and we're gonna look at some of the stuff that we know from that AMA because I think there is a lot of gems hidden in there and I think this AMA is a part of their general plan to be more transparent when it comes to the development of Crossout, something that I personally have been asking for for a long time because I really think that it will benefit the game and we've been seeing so much with public test servers lately and everything has just been great lately with the game so i'm in my opinion so excited i'm really hyped for this and i think they're doing great but let's go into the ama and see what they actually have to say i want to start with uh, what i've personally asked the developers and what i asked them was three five things not three five i can't count number one will the future bring limitations to the amount of vegas on builds while it's not a massive problem in clan wars i know a lot of people are getting quite annoyed by infinite shield builds in pvp especially to this, Alexis says, there will be a diminishing modifier for each Aegis installed. You will see it on the weekend's pit CR. So basically what this means is that there will be diminishing return. And what diminishing return is that if you have some sort of a modifier, you know, and you get hit by the same modifier twice in a row, or you use the same modifier twice in a row, then the second usage and the third usage will be weaker and weaker. This means that, for example, if you have two shields, then what I'm assuming what they want to do is that the second Aegis will then be active for less time. And I think that's a great way of fixing it, actually, because then you won't, there would be no way that you can ever use an infinite shield fusion unless you have, of course, we need to see the stats, but I'm assuming that they will make it so that you cannot shield like four shields in a row and then have them ready again before the last one runs out. Second of all, I asked, what will happen on the short term and long term if the grind was reduced for new players? I have introduced a fair bit of people to the game and their reason for stopping is all the same. The grind is just too hardcore. And to this, he says, reducing the grind is one of the crossouts goals for this year. And that's just great news. I mean, it really sounds like reading through the entire AMA, it really sounds like they want to welcome new players more into the game compared to what they're doing so far. So I definitely welcome this as well. Third question. What does the timeline for new relics look like? As long as we only have a few weapon types of the relic rarity, we will never get a really balanced end game, it feels like. And this was a pretty short answer to it. Yes, there will be new relics this year. Fourth is, a power score bracket feels a bit off still. With the introduction of the new rarity, do you have any plans to make further changes to weapon rarities to divide them better into PS groups? Our matchmaking is not strictly PS group based, but we are aware of the existing issues and we plan to improve it this year. And we hope the new rarity will help us with that. So I'm actually glad about this. I'm happy about this response because I personally don't think that we should have too many rarities. Um, and I think it's great that they are introducing a new type of rarity to see if it does anything for the PS grouping. Fifth question is, any changes to invasion point system? Had situations where more than 5,000 damage to Levi was not enough to score points. Maybe just more transparency on mechanics in general. And to this answers, we want to make the game more transparent this year. In many aspects, not only invasion wise, this particular mode will see improvements this year. And that was pretty much it. So that was it for my questions. Let's go on with your questions. First one is by Tedium Mango, and he has four questions for Alex, and they sound like this. Do you have any plans to update bots, i.e. making sure a diverse number of builds spawn instead of all mandrakes and improving their AI? I would like the number of people playing the game to grow and for bots to be so unnecessary, but I think there will probably be a feature for a long time to come, so I really do think that you need to make them less frustrating. And so this he says, yes, bots will be updated in the month to come. We are aware of the main drag issue, especially in high PS games. So we will see updates to the bots. And I've seen that he talks a lot about the fact that they are in general trying to improve AI behavior, which I think is great. And that's the thing that I want to highlight from this specific question or from this uh, set of questions from TD and Mango, because I think it's very important to address the fact that the bots are just stupid in the game right now. <laughs> so good thing that they are changing it and i really really do value that for the next one here horus luperical asks he says now of course there is a question and i wonder what is the thing like the various drones a part of a skill game based skill based game at all and i think what he's He's asking like, why are drones a part of this game at all when it's a skill based game? I understand that you want an inclusive game, but I hope you can understand that just the team spamming grenadiers can really feel game breaking for that specific round. Would there ever be a chance for a drone free game mode? 
And Alex says, we want there to be no no skill weapons or modules. We prefer not to change mechanics for the existing weapons, so we change its parameters instead. But we introduce new skill-based mechanics. As for the drones, we're introducing a new feature that requires targeting. That's one way to add skills. So maybe this means that all drones will get targeting. We actually don't know that yet, but it could potentially sound like all drones are getting targeting, which I think is both very dangerous to do, but also could be potentially be quite nice if they implemented it in, in the correct fashion. So we might see an overall change to drones. If this is for the good of like for the better or the worse, I don't know as of yet. We'll have to see that I never, never really play drones. So it's hard for me to comment much about, but I think it's good that they are looking at drones. And I know it's a thing that a lot of people are, you know, frustrated about. So yeah, to all of you who hate drones, things might be changing. Then we have Keto Cigaretto who asks, just have one question for you if you can answer it. Do you have any new game modes planned or in the works? I feel like there's so much possible potential here. Levi Wars, Faction Wars, Seafall planning missions makes me hype just fantasizing about it. And Alexis answers to this, I hate to promise anything for the situation may change, so that is no promise. However, this year we plan to add a new PvE mode. Now hold on guys, because a new PvE mode, in my opinion, sounds like one thing because he addresses the PvE mode a couple times and it just sounds like one thing to me. We will finally see complex raids and I am so hyped about that. I really hope it is complex raids that he's talking about because complex raids have been on the table for around a year now and this is basically just like actual hard, less repetitive PvE game modes where you have to work together with your team when you play raids instead of just sitting there and tap firing for 15 minutes trying to finish a raid and then, you know, move on to the next one. Amazing news in my opinion. I really, really do hope that we get the uh, complex raids. So great question there. Then we have a question from Virgil which says, I was wondering why you guys still hold on to the Energy X Rarity PS system. Why don't you just use PS as another balancing, balancing factor? And he says that there is a high probability that the new matchmaking principles that we are working on will fix many issues. So I'm guessing that we might potentially see a change to the way that we are getting matched. And I think that's quite huge news because I don't really know what they want to use if they don't want to use power score as of right now. So maybe we'll see a complete change to power score. Maybe it's going to be based on the weapons that we have mounted. Um, but he also later in the AMA actually referred, referred to the fact that we probably will not, you know, see any changes to power scores and stuff because he didn't feel like a guy bringing a relic into very low power score was necessarily too strong. He feels like most of the battles are won in the garage by building a proper build. And I will say that I mostly have to agree with this. The really interesting thing here is Clan Wars maps. Please give us some map rotation there and remove ship rig, get graveyard again, or randomly select three to four maps each week where we fight on. And to this, Alexis replies, yes, we will add map rotation and map ban for Clan Wars. So we're looking at potential dog teams having to sit in queue for 50 minutes because they want Old Town and everyone who does not want to meet dogs has, dogs has banned Old Town. So. I wonder if if what what this exactly means, but the fact is that we're going to get a map rotation, meaning that we're probably going to see different maps on the rotation each week, so that we never really know which map we're, maps we're going to play. And I think that's very dope. I think it's really dope, and also map banning because there are just a few maps. For example, bridge. If you want to have a fast session, everyone should just ban bridge because then we don't have to sit and shoot at each other for ten minutes. So I I also think this is very dope. Akula Addict asks, is there going to be any change to the timed events such as brawls? At the times that I play, the brawl seems to be locked in most times. If there was an active brawl at all time, that would be cool. We will change how brawls work in the upcoming months. And then he also asks, also, it's kind of disappointing every time I get a prestige level with the engineers and get nothing. Even a small amount of coins would be nice. It feels meaningless so far and a total redundant mechanism. And to this, they reply, we are also not happy about the current prestige system. Thinking about improving it, as a rule, we have to be careful about the rewards in order to not influence the marketplace too much. And that is true because the market is so sensitive to everything that is getting implemented. And, you know, a, a big change to this could be giving us exclusive content, but that would just also be unlocking a lot of content for a lot of veteran players at once. And then they would probably be like, not really feel like they're actually getting rewarded with new stuff because they'll just have everything like this and then there's no fun in getting it. Number six, 
Hello, Alex. Do you have a carpet attached on room wall? In Soviet Russia, the carpet attaches you to the wall. And then my good friend Neely Bobber actually has a question for Alex, and that is not really a question, but more of an idea. And my idea is a workbench that pops pops up once a month and has five different parts from various packs that you can craft. You would need a special resource that you can play to get more of, similar to, for example, shell casings. You can only craft one item from the workbench at a time. Therefore, someone cannot build five echo caps, for example. The idea is basic, but I feel it would definitely help newer and more experienced players blend into the current meta, but still keep packs viable to buy. Alex replies, this sounds like a great idea. We have added it to the feature request list. We plan to rework batch exchange systems uh, soon time, sometime soon to add more variety there. That looks like a nice place for crafting such items. We'll think about it. So they do know that we you know packs might have to be become craftable at some point. And I think it's great that they welcome these suggestions. And I think it's a great suggestion by Neely. And that is actually all of the things that I have collected for you guys for this video. I hope you've had a chance to look at it for yourself. If you haven't, then um, go to Reddit. I'll link in the comments where you can find this entire AMA. Uh, if I am home when this video launches, I am going to travel back to Denmark actually very soon. So I won't be much active this weekend. And I hope that I can still get a live stream out for you guys. You're probably maybe even watching the uh, watching some the first videos from the test server as you watch this video right now as well. So hope to see you guys on the test server in the weekend. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see me stream live from the test server. We'll do it Saturday or Sunday. Until then, have an amazing day, guys. Bye bye.